the evolution of the peppered moth is an evolutionary instance of directional color change in the moth population as a consequence of air pollution during the Industrial Revolution. The frequency of dark-colored moths increased at that time, an example of industrial melanism. Later, when pollution was reduced, the light-colored form again predominated. Industrial melanism in the peppered moth was an early test of Charles Darwin's natural selection in action, and remains as a classic example in the teaching of evolution. 1-2 in 1978 Sewell Wright described it as the clearest case in which a conspicuous evolutionary process has actually been observed. 3-4. The dark-colored or melanic form of the peppered moth, var. carbonaria, was not known before 1811. After field collection in 1848 from Manchester, an industrial city in England, the frequency of the variety was found to have increased drastically. By the end of the 19th century it almost completely outnumbered the original light-colored type, var. typica, with a record of 98% in 1895. 5. The evolutionary importance of the moth was only speculated upon during Darwin's lifetime. It was 14 years after Darwin's death, in 1896, that J. W. Tutt presented it as a case of natural selection. 6. Due to this, the idea widely spread, and more people believed in Darwin's theory. Bernard Kettlewell was the first to investigate the evolutionary mechanism behind peppered moth adaptation, between 1953 and 1956. He found that a light-colored body was an effective camouflage in a clean environment, such as in Dorset, while the dark color was beneficial in a polluted environment like in Birmingham. This selective survival was due to birds which easily caught dark moths on clean trees, and white moths on trees darkened with soot. The story, supported by Kettlewell's experiment, became the canonical example of Darwinian evolution and evidence for natural selection used in standard textbooks. 7. However, failure to replicate the experiment and criticism of Kettlewell's methods by Theodore David Sargent in the late 1960s led to general skepticism. When Judith Hooper's Of Moths and Men was published in 2002, Kettlewell's story was more sternly attacked, accused of fraud, and became widely disregarded. The criticism became a major argument for creationists. Michael Majerus was the principal defender. His seven-year experiment beginning in 2001, the most elaborate of its kind in population biology, the results of which were published posthumously in 2012, vindicated Kettlewell's work in great detail. This restored peppered moth evolution as the most direct evidence, and one of the clearest and most easily understood examples of Darwinian evolution in action. 8. Before the Industrial Revolution, the black peppered moth was rare. The first black specimen, of unknown origin, was kept in the University of Oxford in 1811. 9-10-11, the first lived specimen was caught by R. S. Edelston in Manchester, England in 1848, but he reported this only 16 years later in 1864 in the journal Entomologist. 12. Edelston notes that by 1864 it was the more common type of moth in his garden in Manchester. The light-bodied moths were able to blend in with the light-colored lichens and tree bark, and the less common black moth was more likely to be eaten by birds. As a result of the common light-colored lichens and English trees, therefore, the light-colored moths were much more effective at hiding from predators, and the frequency of the dark allele was about 0.01%. 13. During the early decades of the Industrial Revolution in England, the countryside between London and Manchester became blanketed with soot from the new coal-burning factories. Many of the light-bodied lichens died from sulfur dioxide emissions, and the trees became darkened. This led to an increase in bird predation for light-colored moths, as they no longer blended in as well in their polluted ecosystem, indeed, their bodies now dramatically contrasted with the color of the bark. Dark-colored moths, on the other hand, were camouflaged very well by the blackened trees. 7. The population of dark-colored moth rapidly increased. By the mid-19th century, the number of dark-colored moths had risen noticeably, and by 1895, the percentage of dark-colored moths in Manchester was reported at 98%, a dramatic change, of almost 100%, from the original frequency. 7. This effect of industrialization in body color led to the coining of the term industrial melanism. 2. The implication that industrial melanism could be evidence supporting Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection was noticed during his lifetime. Albert Bridges Farn, 1841-1921, a British entomologist, wrote to Darwin on November 18, 1878 to discuss his observation of color variations in the annulet moth, 
then Nofos Obscurata, now Carissa Obscurata. He noted the existence of dark moths in peat in the new forest, brown moths on clay and red soil in Herefordshire, and white moths on chalk cliffs in Lewis, then suggested this variation was an example of survival of the fittest. He told Darwin that he had found dark moths on a chalk slope where the foliage had been blackened by smoke from lime kilns, and he had also heard that white moths had become less common at Lewis after lime kilns had been in operation for a few years. 14. Darwin does not seem to have responded to this information, possibly because he thought natural selection would be a much slower process. 15. A scientific explanation of moth coloration was only published in 1896, 14 years after Darwin's death, when J. W. Tutt explicitly linked peppered moth melanism to natural selection. 13. Melanism has appeared in the European and North American peppered moth populations. Information about the rise in frequency is scarce. Much more is known about the subsequent fall in phenotype frequency, as it has been measured by lepidopterists using moth traps. Stewart compiled data for the first recordings of the peppered moth by locality, and deduced that the Carbonaria morph was the result of a single mutation that subsequently spread. By 1895, it had reached a reported frequency of 98% in Manchester. 16. From around 1962 to the present, the phenotype frequency of Carbonaria has steadily fallen in line with cleaner air around industrial cities. Its decline has been measured more accurately than its rise, through more rigorous scientific studies. Notably, Bernard Kettlewell conducted a national survey in 1956, Bruce Grant conducted a similar one in early 1996, 17, and L. M. Cook in 2003. 18. Similar results were found in America. Melanic forms have not been found in Japan. It is believed that this is because peppered moths in Japan do not inhabit industrialized regions. Citation needed 19. J. W. Tutt was the first to propose the differential bird predation hypothesis in 1896, as a mechanism of natural selection. The melanic morphs were better camouflaged against the bark of trees without folios lichen, whereas the typica morphs were better camouflaged against trees with lichens. As a result, birds would find and eat those morphs that were not camouflaged with increased frequency. 20. 